Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Chin Chin from Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market with their award-winning sommelier, Ted Ross. And Ted, before we get started, you have been the sommelier of the year for 2014 and 15, consecutive yes. years in yes. the Best of Our magazine. Yes. And we need to make this happen again for 2016. We do, absolutely, so absolutely. So we need Please. all the viewers out there to get on board and vote for sommelier Ted Ross to make it three consecutive years. And He's doing everything so well here at Vincent Joe's yeah, Gourmet thank Market. You, thank you. OurDetroit.com, please place your vote. Much Excellent. appreciated. Yeah, absolutely yeah. will. Yeah. And Ted, in the time being, the big game's coming up. Well, yeah, you're, you're in luck, buddy. I know you enjoy uh, <laughs> shooting beer episodes, and that's oh, what yeah. we've got today in celebration of the big game. So uh, most importantly, why don't we pour ourselves one before we get started talking about these? It wouldn't be fair to the viewers if we didn't know what it tastes like. Absolutely, we were, we're, 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 we're doing this for the team, okay? Exactly. All right, so we've got some Weinstefan Pilsner from Freising, Germany, okay. uh, in Bavaria. Tiny thousand-year-old brewery that we've talked about before here on the show. One of my absolute favorites. This is their Pilsner. It's a classic. I'm going to start this in a well-chilled uh, mug. The beer's well-chilled. I'm going to be really delicate in pouring this and then kind of pull up at the end to get a little bit of a nice frothy head on there. And there we go. Oh, one appreciate for you. that. I'll pour one for myself. And uh, we will get started here. With the big game coming up, you know, I think I think beers that pair well with all the kind of cool foods that go along with it are really important. And that's what we have up here right now. Um, for me, one of my favorites are buffalo wings, right? Oh. I love I love all the cool spicy sauces um, that that come along with them. And I can't think of a better style of beer than than the celebrated IPAs that I have up here to go with that. Um, there's some really really nice ones that have just been released in Michigan. Not only seasonal, but some out-of-state imports uh, are here now. First one we'll talk about here is Ballast Point. This is an award-winning brewery out of San Diego, California. Definitely specialists in that really, really uh, in-your-face, hoppy, West Coast-style uh, uh, IPAs. This is their Grapefruit Sculpin, so it's a really hoppy beer yeah, yeah. With, some, uh, with some grapefruit flavoring. And the citrusy component goes really well with the buffalo sauce, and they just kind of balance each other out and wash that spice right out. It's awesome, awesome beer. Uh, another another out-of-state import we just got in distribution here is Deschutes. These guys are up in Bend, Oregon, and this is their fresh-squeezed IPA. Uh, actually, no citrus in here. All the citrus flavor comes from the citra hops and the mosaic hops that are that are in this beer. So cool packaging, cool name, really refreshing. Hoppy, citrusy, sort of piney, yeah. and very, very delicious. Excellent, excellent. These guys have won numerous gold medals at the Great American Beer Festival as well, so they know what they're doing. Now, back to the great beer state of Michigan. Another one of my favorites, Founders in Grand Rapids oh, just yeah. released the Izaka IPA. Um, new hop bill here that they've never done before. Definitely worth a shot. Kind of, kind of along those West Coast mm -hmm. style IPAs more of the citrusy component as opposed to the herbal spicy or piney kind of flavors that you might get in something like this. Although this is not an IPA, this is Bells out of Kalamazoo. This is uh, new. They release this just before Valentine's Day every year, uh, but then it goes through uh, mid-March. This is brewed with rye. It's a golden ale with a, with, a, with a lot of rye, and rye gives that bready sort of spiciness uh, in the beer that'll work really well with those those foods that we mentioned. Bell's is uh, one of my favorite local. Yeah, they not so much local, but Michigan breweries. They've really, you know, it could be argued as to who did it. But in my mm -hmm. opinion, Bell's put Michigan on the craft craft the map, circuit. Yeah. You know, and there a lot of people had followed, but they're kind of the forefathers. So what do we have here? This is Greenbush out of Sawyer on the west side. This is a seasonal from them called Indispensable. Okay. Really, really cool IPA, just totally unique. Uh, kind of a tweener in terms of style. You're gonna get those citrus characteristics that I like out of the out of the west coast, you know, mm -hmm. real resinous sort of hoppy uh, flavors, along with some spiciness as well. So you're recommending a lot of IPAs. Yeah. What, exactly what is an IPA? Great question. IPA or India Pale Ale is really the, the, the style or category of beer that, that launched the craft beer revolution. Um, it harkens back to old, old British days when the Brits had troops stationed in India and had trouble getting fresh beer to their colony all the way over in the, in the uh, you know, Indian Ocean. So to survive that long boat ride from Britain, 
they figured out if they brewed a, a traditional pale ale but used a lot of hops, which are natural preservatives, and brewed the beer with slightly higher alcohols that it would make the trip to India and the British troops would be happy. So here we have the modern day IPA. And we're I just have, reaping the benefits from it. And them. we're reaping <laughs> the benefits from it. Yeah, we, we have some really, really nice uh, traditional British interpretations of them as well. But the, the modern day craft beer drinker is all about the new world IPA. And, and so these IPAs, is that something you recommend for all of these salty snacks for the big game or more along the spicy lines? Yeah, they they're, they can be very food friendly, but they really, really come in their own when you've got really heavily seasoned foods, whether it's buffalo wings or curry or even spicy Mexican salsas and dips like that. They work really well. You know, in, it, just like in the wine world, when you're trying to pair wine with food, you want to match intensities of flavor. So if you've got something really, really sweet, let's say, you'd want the wine to be equally as sweet so there's harmony and they, they, and they, they pair, you know. Uh, same with the, with the beer. If you've got really intensely spiced and seasoned food, you need some intensely favored beer to go along with it. And that's what, that's what these guys are right here. So what else are you going to pair with today? Oh, we've got a lot of cool stuff awesome. for you. So what do we have up here next? Well, totally opposite from the IPAs. Now we're on the malty side of things. The, the two major flavors in beer, kind of the yin and yang, if you will, are the, are the sweet malt flavors uh, that come from mal the, the, the fermentable, whether it's barley or rye or wheat. And then balancing those sweet flavors out are the hops that makes the IPA so unique. So these are, these are maltier beers. They work better with things like chili, with, you know, your bratwurst, with your sliders, that kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know? Yeah. Or just, just sitting back and cozying up next to the fireplace. They're, they're more warm, they're, they're, they're sweeter, they're richer, sometimes darker in color. Um, we've got the Cabin Fever from New Holland Brewing here from Holland, Michigan. Mm -hmm. So this one, when you pour it, it's going to be really, really a nice copper brown color in the glass. And you get those really nice roasty malty sort of flavors that just make it a real nice drink with oh yeah with 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 those those types of foods. yeah excellent another yeah. one is dark horses baffle brown these guys are from marshall over near jackson um great great brewery really fun personalities i highly recommend visiting this brewery okay you're gonna have to get out and do that yeah a new, kind of newcomer to the at least the canned beer scene uh, they've, they've been doing some kegs for, for a little while longer, but this is Perrin Brewing. They're in Comstock Park, and they are, they are making some really great uh, traditional styles of beer, along with some, with some great crafty stuff as well. This is a black ale, and this is a golden ale. Again, really correct, drinkable, food-friendly beers. And that's really what we're looking for for the big game coming up. Yeah, yeah. You got your pizzas, your exactly. bratwurst, your pretzels, your wings, all available want, right here at Vincent Joe's. You want something drinkable, right? Yes, Consumable. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes I, I see I see some um, some hesitance from customers regarding the can thing. Yeah, you it's, know, it's I, different, definitely. Well, you know, it's actually a superior package when you're when you're talking beer. The the can of of 40 years ago that imparted that aluminum sort of taste is, is long gone. Mm -hmm. These are all specially lined. They prevent any light from, from damaging the beer during transportation, and they're just a overall better package. They're more environmentally friendly. So get on the, get on the, the can game, because breweries are, and eventually, you know, there's gonna be no choice. Right, yeah, so. it's just different. When I think of a craft beer, like a, a better beer, mm -hmm. I think of bottle or keg. I, it's definitely no. different and new to see. That's a good thing. Yeah, That's a good it thing. really is. Atwater Block we've talked about before with their Dirty Blonde and Vanilla oh, Chava yeah. Porter and all that. This is a new beer they're doing. It's a traditional German Bach uh, called Tunnel Ram. And it's pretty cool. Atwater Block's going to be redoing all of their packages using local Detroit artist Tony Rocco. Okay. The only one we have in stock is the, the Tunnel Ram right now, but there are more to follow. They're just gorgeous, so I, I encourage the customers to come in and take a look. They're really cool, and the beers couldn't be better. I noticed eight percent on there. That's uh, yeah, quite that's strong. That's a big boy. Yeah, the the name Bach comes from the German word meaning uh, meaning strength. Right. Yeah. Um, it's the definitely that. Of, yeah, the symbol of Bach is the is the ram. You know, the 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 goat. And these are um, 
These are these are rich, malty, but strong, strong beers. And what do you pair something so strong with when it comes to food? Well, you know, again, it's got that malty characteristic that likes roasted meats and chilies and that kind of thing. Okay, that's so, Yeah. I know you guys here at Vincent Joe's do such a good job of your house-made gluten-free products. What kind of yeah. beers do you have for someone with more of a restricted diet? I'm glad you asked. It's a huge category for us with new offerings pretty much every week. Uh, let's start with the ciders. We're all familiar with Shorts Brewing up in Bel Air. They released a line of uh, ciders they call Starcut Ciders. There are three flavors available in bottle right now. Here are two of them. Uh, there's the Squishy and the Octo Rock, both done in a semi-sweet style. Squishy's got some Michigan cherry juice added to it. Oh, okay. So very pleasant, very easy to drink, and as always with cider, gluten-free. That's, so, all, that's that, all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it sounds like it's got a, a good taste to it as well. They're fabulous. Yeah. They really are. They sell all year long. Ciders are extremely popular. And in the gluten-free, you know, more traditional beer world, um, a few of my favorites. This is Omission from Widmer Brothers mm -hmm. on the West Coast. This is their straight-up American-style lager that's uh, brewed to uh, to uh, not have any gluten in it. So that's a, that's a great thing. Two new ones from New Belgium and uh, Colorado. Gluteny. So you've got a pale ale and a golden ale here. Uh, so again. I like the name. Gluten yeah, name great. For the gluten free. Absolutely, absolutely. And then we've got Dogfish Head out of Delaware's Tweezin Ale. Uh, this is brewed with sorghum, buckwheat honey, and strawberries. Oh. So not terribly sweet. Yeah. More of the strawberry and honey comes across on the nose, but what a what a unique and delicious drink. Yeah, it you know? sounds very unique. There's a lot of almost random, but not random. Just kind of it, across the board. Great, in your, great your taste. combo. Yeah. And gluten-free as well. There's a lot of cool things for the for the uh, celiacs to drink now, which is, which is great. Yes, it's all you can ask for. Yeah. Well, that pretty much concludes another episode of Chin Chin here from yeah. Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market. And here, we've got you covered for anything you need for the Just big game. Just about anything you can need for the big game, absolutely. Lots of great stuff here. And don't forget to vote for sommelier Ted Ross in the Best of Our Detroit Magazine Sommelier of the Year. Thank you. Let's make it three years in a row, right? Three years in a row. <laughs> the hat trick. Chin chin. Chin chin.